101 Zen Stories from Zen Flesh and Bones. This is story number 45, Right and Wrong. This is a story about Bankai, the Zen Master Bankai. But Zen Master Bankai was a famous teacher, I think, in 17th or 18th century Japan, Japan for sure. And he was very famous for talking about the unborn Buddha mind. That is, the truth is unborn. It's just always there. The unborn Buddha mind <clears throat> is what is constantly present and what is to be relied upon. We could call it the foundation, the unborn foundation of all things. We could call it the uh, Rigpa. We could call it the, the spacious isness at the root of all things. Well, Bankai was teaching a meditation retreat for some weeks. And he was very famous, and people came from all over Japan to hear him. And as he was teaching this retreat, there was at least one person in the assembly who was a thief. The disciples around him caught him, brought him to Bankai, and said, this person is a thief Please get rid of him. We don't want him. Get out of here. Bankai ignored, ignored them. He just didn't say anything. Now, of course, you, it's hard to imagine something like that happening in this day and age. But later, this same person was caught stealing again. And the disciples around him got upset, said this is intolerable, brought him to Bankai. Bankai ignored it again. Completely ignored it. Well, the students were very upset at this point, and they said, you know, you are really being unreasonable, and you're really being unfair, and we're, we're suffering from this person, and if you don't actually make him leave, then we're all going to leave. Because we don't want to be in a place that is unethical. We don't want to be in a place that is not respecting all of us. And at that point, Bankai turned to them, and he said, you know, all of you people, you understand the difference between skillful and unskillful, between right and wrong, between what is helpful and what's not helpful. This person does not understand that. This person does not have this clarity of mind that you have. Who needs the teaching more? Who needs the teaching more? Isn't that like we all are? That as long as people agree with us, as long as people are in harmony with our view, whether it be our fellow practitioners or the teacher or other aspects of community, we feel good. We think, ah, everything is going well. But as soon as something is really outside of our range of comfort, we begin reacting. We begin wanting to get rid of. We begin wanting to expel. So Bankai realized that this particular student was in his assembly, and he was, it was the result of a whole karmic stream. And he knew that if someone is angry and we get angry back and they're taking things and we get upset and distressed and we start punishing them, that perpetuates a karmic chain forward. But if we can accept and respond, accept and respond, then 
the, the karmic burden stops there. Now, in a situation like this, Bankai may have had his eye not on the thief, but on all the other students. Bankai's eye may have been, oh, thank goodness, there's a thief that has come in and stirred everybody up and upset their fixed views. Oh, thank goodness, a thief has come that will help me work with all of these other disciples who are so limited in their capacity. And perhaps to Bankai's eye, the thief was an incidental issue. People, people steal. But working with his own disciples and their own rigidity, their own righteousness, that may have been the whole point of the teaching. Righteousness and rigidity is not love and kindness. And loving kindness is the foundation of the Buddha Dharma. <laughs>